Uh, good evening, and welcome to tonight's candidate forum for the races to represent wards three and four on the AC Transit Board of Directors. My name is Scott Oades, and I'm a board member with the East Bay Transit Riders Union and an Oakland resident, and I will be your host tonight. So on November 8th, residents living in the AC Transit District will cast votes for four seats on the AC Transit Board, the directors representing wards three, four, and five, and one at-large director seat. We were proud to host a forum with Alfred Twu, a candidate for the at-large seat on August 22nd. And in District 5, Director Diane Shaw is running unopposed. So we thought it would be most helpful to host a forum tonight to introduce you to the candidates running in the competitive races to represent wards three and four on the AC Transit Board. And we are uh, fortunate tonight to be joined by, um, well, by at least uh, Sarah Syed and Murphy Nicali, um, candidates for uh, wards three and four, respectively. And we are hoping and expecting that uh, their opponents, uh, Stuart Chen and Barisha Spriggs, will also be joining us. So uh, welcome to Sarah and Murphy. And um, we, I guess before we begin, I want to uh, draw everyone's attention to another candidate forum we're hosting later this week. Uh, this Thursday, the 15th at 6 p.m., we'll have a forum for candidates running to represent District 6 on the BART Board of Directors. We'll be joined by Liz Ames and Lance Nishihara, who will share their perspectives on transit and mobility and how BART can make our region's transit more seamless. We hope you'll join us, and we're going to drop the RSVP link into the chat. Uh, this event is proudly co-hosted by Seamless Bay Area, East Bay Transit Riders Union, Transport Oakland, Spur, Bike East Bay, Streets for People, East Bay Yimby, and Trans Bay Coalition. So thank you to all of our co-hosts. Now, I would like to share a few logistics for this forum. Um, we'll be working from an agreed upon list of questions, and each candidate will have 60 seconds to respond to each question. Feel free to enter your questions into the Zoom Q&A tool at any time. We're gonna get through as many as we can, but can't uh, get to everyone necessarily. And we may edit or combine some questions to save time. This is a nonpartisan informational event meant to acquaint you with candidates and important issues in this race. Member organizations will be sharing additional info on this race after tonight's event, possibly including an endorsement process. To stay in touch, please feel free to join um, co-hosting organizations mailing lists or follow us on social media. We're going to post the org websites into the chat. And finally, I want to note that this event is being recorded and will be posted publicly afterwards. Um, I'm just double checking. Do we have any more candidates in attendance yet or just the two so far? Um, I am not seeing other candidates who are have arrived into the okay. audience. Okay. Um, well, yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. And um, I would like to invite our candidates who are here to uh, each give a one minute introduction. And so um, this is going to be your first of many 60 second opportunities to talk. And so to stay on track, we have Elijah here timekeeping. He's going to give a, a visual cue when you have 20 seconds left and then another when you're at time. Um, I hate to do it, but I'm going to have to interrupt you if you go much over 60 seconds. And um, so with that, let's have Sarah Syed, uh, uh, candidate for Ward 3, give a 60 second introduction. Welcome, Sarah. Welcome, thanks for having me. I'm Sarah Sayed, a transportation manager. I'm running for the board because people deserve transit that meets their needs for mobility with dignity. And I've spent my career uh, building light rail, bus rapid transit, bicycle projects, and I've partnered with many of the agencies that are critical to AC Transit's success. I'm the candidate that really understands transit with a master's in transportation engineering and city planning. And I want to improve um, our rider experience, um, you know, uh, and, and face our fiscal cliff. 
Uh, so many of our writers never had the opportunity to stay home during the pandemic. And as a planner, I understand the issues that keep them from being able to participate in planning and decision making. And I'll put my skills to work to support those most affected by the pandemic, being able to recover. Um, I, uh, with my experience and relationships I've built, I'll fight for federal transit operating support and competitive funding to connect our communities uh, with first and last mile connections and more frequent transit service. So we meet our climate and our equity goals. Um, I'm proud to be endorsed by all of all three mayors um, in Ward 3, um, as well as uh, State Senator Nancy Skinner, um, um, okay. Berkeley Mayor. <laughs> Sorry, is, was there a 22nd warning? Oh, Did I miss? Is it in you, the chat? You, or is you, it you did miss, it's a visual thing. Can you see Elijah right now? No, not at all. Okay. Um, that's I was a Dina. Sorry, I was looking for Adina. I was like, I saw this. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so um, yeah, it'd be helpful to have a countdown clock somehow yeah. like a, that's running, and I will uh, shift nope. over to see, try and make my screen bigger. My screen's pretty small, so I can't see. Okay. Uh, um, now sorry. I see Elijah. There's yeah, Elijah. well, now you, now you see only Elijah. Okay, so thank you. Remove. That's probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, if nothing else works, I will do a verbal cue when I get that from Elijah. But but thank you, thank you, Sarah, and um, and welcome, Barisha. We are just doing candidate introductions, and so um, we are gonna switch over to to Murphy. And so um, Murphy, you have sixty seconds to introduce yourself. Great. Well, thank you guys uh, for having this forum. Uh, first off, I'm going to start off by saying I'm running to finish what I started. Uh, I competed to replace uh, Mark Williams on the board when he resigned and was appointed by the board. And uh, and I've been supported by the board and the board members. Uh, as you guys know, AC Transit is, uh, as, as, as our other transit agencies around the country, are facing a number of significant challenges. Uh, we're going to need to restore services. We're going to need to reimagine our network post-pandemic. Uh, and in addition to that, we have fiscal issues. We've got operating issues and we've got capital funding issues. I have the hands-on experience and the expertise to guide AC Transit through these difficult times. Uh, it's hard to distill 40 years of work into one, one minute, but just suffice it to say, I have helped transit agencies around the country generate and raise funds both for operating and capital of over a billion dollars. Uh, and I'm here to offer my services AC Transit to, uh, to see if I can assist them through these difficult times. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and next, um, I'd like to have Barisha do a quick introduction. Um, before going into that, I, I forgot to say before. Um, so Murphy and Barisha are both running for Ward 4. This includes portions of Hayward, San Leandro, as well as the unincorporated areas of Ashland, Castro Valley, Cherryland, Fairview, and San Lorenzo in Alameda County. And so with that, uh, go ahead, Brisha, you have 60 seconds to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Brisha Spriggs. Um, I'm a proven leader for the people. I rely on AC Transit every day and I've lived in Ward 4 for nearly 30 years. I'm a long, lifelong Democrat and have decades of government policy advocacy and community uh, service. I'm an elected member of the Alameda County Democratic Central Committee. And I've been working on policy to help um, our County and our state. Um, as a bus rider in a working class community with many essential workers, I want to make sure that riders can depend on AC transit, have healthy connected communities. The public should be uh, public transit should be reliable, accessible, equitable, affordable, and environmentally friendly. I will keep the fares low with quality customer service, um, and I will support employees to. Attain, uh, obtain additional funding to hire more employees and resource services. Um, and I was an organizer for Transform when John Knox uh, White worked there. I'm a proven leader. I catalyzed the two corridor improvement projects on Hesperian and on East 14th Street. Um, I made them more accessible for transit riders, pedestrians, and bicyclists. Now have a safe area, we have safer sidewalks, adequate lights, bike lanes. Finally, after 30 years, safer um, ADA crosswalks, 
that has significantly reduced our carbon footprint and increased bus riding, bike riding, okay. and walking in our community. Okay, thank you. And so um, it looks like we so far are going to have just the three candidates tonight. And so thank you all for being here and for giving your introductions. Um, we are about to get started. One reminder for our viewers, uh, please use the Q&A tool to submit questions. We're going to get to those questions at the end once we go through um, most or all of our list. And so um, with that, um, we're going to get into it. And so um, my first question to all of you is, uh, what's your favorite bus route and why? And, and we're going to start with Sarah. Thanks. My favorite route is the 57. I live in the Diamond. I can use it to hop over to the Laurel um, or to come back from the lake um, when I'm too lazy to bike up the hill. So it's uh, it runs so frequently. Um, that's also what I love about it. So that's a that's awesome. my route. Thank you. And uh, Barisha, what's your favorite bus route? My favorite bus route is the 10. I use it all the time um, to go all through Ward 4, the unincorporated areas on East 14, on East 14 down to uh, Bayford Park, on East 14 down to San Leandro Park, and also going the totally opposite way, going down to the Hayward Library, the Hayward, uh, the Hayward BART station. That's the one I use to connect with most two other forms of public transportation. And it was really good and really frequently. Thank you. Um, and and last, go ahead, uh, oh, Murphy. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, I have two favorites. Um, uh, growing up in AC in in the Bay Area in Oakland, in particular, uh, I used to ride the 57 uh, to Oakland High School. So that was one of my favorites because I took it every day to school. Uh, my current favorite is the uh, Tiempo. Uh, I like riding it down to downtown Oakland where I have my meetings downtown. So uh, that's kind of my favorite right now. I'm kind of enamored with the with the sort of the fixed guideway aspects of uh, the BRT. Okay, uh, thanks everyone. That was fun. Um, we are, so you know, with the next questions, we're going to be keeping the same uh, order, but rotating who starts. And so hopefully you'll get into the flow of it. But um. Our next question is, uh, AC Transit is still operating at well below pre-pandemic service levels, which we're low to begin with. Uh, what would you do to bring the district closer to service restoration and how? And what about service expansion after that? And uh, go ahead, Barisha. Okay, so we have a, a fiscal cliff after the federal money runs out. What I'd like to do is create either uh, talk to my legislators. Um, I'm very close to my legislators. That's on the executive board of the California Democratic Party. And on the county level, talk to my legislators about a legislative bill or getting um, a ballot uh, measure on the ballot to make a permanent uh, solution for creating money for AC Transit, for the goals and the things that we need to do. Um, and I would like to expand it by, um, by creating more BRT, bus rapid transit, going down East 14th, the East 14th corridor uh, south. And um, I've been working with uh, Alameda County Transportation Commission since five years ago uh, on this project. They have the grants. And um, I will, as on the board, I will create it. I will have the will to okay. do it on the AC Transit Board. Thank you. Um, and, and just to check, can, can you all see Elijah holding up the little signs? Or give me a thumbs up if you, if you can see Elijah holding the sign. Sarah, can you see as well? OK, awesome. So th that'll be your visual cue with 20 seconds and 60. And I'm going to try to be good about really cutting you off, even though it, it doesn't feel good to do. Um, but um, but thank you for your response. Um, next up, we have Murphy. Would you like me? Let me know if you want me to repeat the question. Uh, it was about uh, bringing back service and expanding service. Was that the question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Clock started. 
Go ahead, first yeah. off, um, the, the bringing back to service, uh, the, everybody knows that and everyone is encountering the same situation in terms of employees and, and drivers in particular. Uh, so one of the things we really need to focus on and on the board, we've been really trying to drive this point home to staff is that they really got to up their game with respect to recruitment and training and, and, and feed and, and improving the throughput to get more drivers as fast as possible. In addition to that, we have to utilize the drivers that we have in a more efficient way to, to get as many drivers as possible out there on the road. Uh, and, uh, and again, I think that's just a question of working more closely with the, with the unions and, uh, and with staff and just trying to see if we can work collaboratively to uh, get as many drivers on the road as possible so that we can bring service back. In terms of expanding service, uh, I just think we need to, for the time being, because the climate is not right economically to, uh, to be seeking for additional funds, the voters are just not in a mood with inflation. So I think what we need to do is be judicial with our uh, uh, federal relief funds, try to buy some time for the next couple of years until maybe the, the, the climate changes. In the meantime, let's get our position in, in place to, uh, to, for a regional measure to fully fund AC mm -hmm. Transit. Okay, thank you. And Sarah? Thanks. Uh, like many of us, our operators have had to quarantine due to COVID and to take care of sick loved ones. Uh, we won't be able to, you know, restore service unless we have transit operators, and we won't have operators unless we are, you know, paying them well, offering decent working conditions, and uh, treating the people who make transit happen every day with with respect. Uh, too many of our operators are driving all day and then, you know, driving another two hours home, right? Super commuters due to the high cost of housing in the Bay Area, right? There are structural issues that will take a long time to address, um, but there are things we can do right away, right? You know, ensuring we're addressing um, the bathroom shortages, right? You shouldn't be getting a, um, you know, urinary tract infection if you're driving our bus, right? Uh, we need to uh, to find out, you know, be an employer of choice, right? And we need to advocate to the state um, for systemic and structural changes in how we invest in transit operations. So okay. um, that's what, those are places we can start. Um, there's much more we can do. Okay, thank you. Now, with this next one, we are going to start with Murphy and uh, what does AC Transit need to accomplish to become truly accessible to people with disabilities? And what would you do to achieve this in my view? Um, geez. Well, first off, I mean, I think AC Transit does a pretty good job. We just uh, had a uh, ACE, uh, accessibility uh, advisory committee meeting today, in fact, and, and we were going over the, the, um, the, fail, the equipment failures and the report only included three or four different, uh, I think it was four incidents of equipment failure. So overall, I think we've done a pretty good job with our, with our lifts on our buses uh, with respect to uh, ADA. Um, I think uh, is there more we can do? Absolutely. We're talking about trying to improve our uh, wayfinding uh, and, and recognition for the uh, visually impaired uh, at our bus stops. Uh, there's things we're gonna need to do in, to improve in that area as well. Um, I think our whole communications uh, via the vis vis uh, the various computer apps and phone apps and so forth uh, need to be enhanced as well uh, to improve. So I think the, the sort of big thing we're probably focusing on right now is, is, is wayfinding and, uh, and trying to improve that. Okay, thank you. Next, we have Sarah. Thanks. Um, seconding what Murphy said, I think, you know, uh, the, implementing the transformation action plan, you know, wayfinding, signage, mapping, um, also addressing the uh, both the, the real experiences that our, our seniors and people with disabilities are having um, and the perceptions, right? Uh, transit is, is 10 times safer than driving, but it doesn't always feel that way. Um, pass ups are occurring. And if that happens, you know, and you've got to wait half an hour or, or the next bus is canceled, um, you know, we've got to improve the customer experience, right? That'll benefit seniors and people with disabilities and everyone. Um, you know, I think consulting with NACTO on universal design um, as to supplant some of our design standards uh, and really thinking about universal design for our proposed and active projects um, on the rapid corridors. 
Um, also, just looking at how can we uh, reorganize and approach uh, services uh, with East Bay Paratransit uh, within our budget as well. Thank you. Yeah, thank, <clears throat> thank you. And last, we have Arisha. Yes, I feel that um, with the BRT project, the platforms are more accessible to people with disabilities. Um, it's much easier for people to access people with, um, you know, wheelchairs, so forth and so on. And I'd like to get um, upgrade the bus stops to have Braille. I have a really good friend that's uh, right, AT Transit that's that's blind. That's a supporter of mine. Um, Braille and the audio um, output about the times of the buses. Um, San Francisco kind of has the signs and um, also the audio. So I feel like we need an upgrade of the bus stops and um, and some of the other systems that are going to make it easier uh, for people with disabilities. So that's really important to me. Um, and so I feel like those are good ideas to get and really listen to them and get um, get the changes made. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. And uh, with the next question, we'll be starting with Sarah. And the question is, uh, what actions should AC Transit be taking to let riders and operators feel safe from a public health perspective? And uh, go ahead, Sarah. Thanks. So we need to follow the guidance of our public health authorities and and go beyond that, right? So taking steps to where we have a culture of safety, right? Where um, people are, you know, have we have a culture of care, right? Of riders caring for one another, right? So um, I, I think that's really important, right? Because, um, you know, we've seen that we can't always rely upon our public health agencies uh, to keep us safe. Um, thank you. Okay. And um, next we have Risha. Yes, um, I think we need to rely upon our public officials advice um, regarding the guidance that they give us at all times. Um, I definitely want to keep up the free um, masks, the free um, hand sanitizer. Um, and, um, you know, put information out there on the bus regarding um, updates with the, the health department. Um, and uh, I think that that should suffice. Thank you. And now Murphy. Um, well, I would agree that uh, clearly we need to continue to listen to the, to the experts with respect to the health concerns uh, around COVID, uh, continue with the, the, the sanitation, excuse me, with the, um, the cleaning of the buses, as well as uh, the, the shields and the, the, the uh, sanitizers and the, the masks. I think that needs to be continued. With respect to the riders, I think that's, that's an, well, both to the operators and the riders. I think that we need to try to uh, provide more, uh, uh, more help in that regard. And one of the things I'd like to see is, is maybe the utilization of, not necessarily sheriffs per se, but some types of ambassadors who can, who can frequently get on buses uh, occasionally uh, to ride for some period of time so that they can, so riders can feel a little more comfortable that there's somebody that's looking out for them. And when there is incidents, and more importantly, we need to make sure that, that we, we stand up and support our drivers uh, and, and prosecute anybody that, that, that assaults a driver to the fullest extent possible. Uh, and again, I think that's the message we need to send. I think that that's also impacted our ability to recruit drivers is the, the, the fear of, of safety. Okay. Um, we are, uh, pivoting to talk about uh, another type of uh, safety on board. So this question is, uh, what does AC Transit need to do to improve rider and operator security from violence on and around buses? And um, with this one, we will start with Sarah again. Thank you. So I know firsthand, um, you know, the risk that transit riders take. Um, and I've, you know, I've personally been assaulted um, by 
um, someone getting off the bus, you know, and there are, it's so important that um, AC doesn't go it alone, right? Because for me, it's, it's when the bus doesn't come very frequently, right? And I'm there waiting and there's no lighting. Um, and when I'm walking home from the bus stop, right? So I think we need to really build strong partnerships um, and focus on, you know, those first and last mile connections, uh, going after more funding um, to really, um, you know, improve our, um, to have complete streets, to have you know, but but also getting a better handle on the issue, right? There's new legislation on this that requires us to track data. But for many survivors, you know, it's they're they're healing. They don't want to speak up, right? For me, I I didn't report it, right? So um, we need to listen to communities. You know, go out and and actually talk to people who have trusted relationships with communities to get a better handle on on the scale of the problem. Thank you. And now, Barisha, go ahead. Yes, um, I, um, I I've heard from um, some of the unions as I'm, I've, the um, ATU has actually recommended me the e-board from ATU and I had a conversation with them um, and they want some walkthroughs of the sheriff because of the assaults um, that have been happening. Um, so I would do walkthroughs, occasional walkthroughs like BART does with um, law enforcement as a deterrent, but also to balance um, because I don't like over criminalization of um, people that are low income or minorities. Um, I want to create a crisis intervention program just like BART where people trained in social services are actually trying to help people that are not necessarily violent, but having maybe some mental health issues or need some resources. Um, actually, Latifa Simon uh, has endorsed me on BART and I, I have always admired her social justice uh, awesome. vision awesome. as part of okay. my social justice vision. Thank you. And, and last, Murphy. Well, I, I, would, uh, I would support uh, additional coverage with respect to the uh, law enforcement folks that uh, we pay Quite a large, uh, pretty good sized contract that we have with them. Uh, but I would do it in a targeted fashion. Uh, we have the data. Uh, we know where the, the problem, we probably know where the problem routes are, where the problem segments are. And, and to the extent that, that we can identify those segments uh, and or those routes, uh, we can have uh, 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 the sheriffs uh, participate in, in the ride alongs uh, some period of time, just to over some period of time, just to to make sure that the presence is felt and known on the, on those particular routes, uh, that may help to 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 ferret out some of the some of the problem areas. So that's what I would propose that we use the data that we collect uh, that we know that's there to to try to identify the, the problem areas. Great, <clears throat> thank you, and um, I want to thank you all for for sticking to the sixty second limit. I know. It can feel really short sometimes, so we all appreciate it. Um, and so the next question, we are going to have Barisha going first. And the question is, what do you think about current AC transit fare levels and policies? And how should they be changed, if at all? Go ahead, Barisha. Yes, I'm, um, I know that a lot, many of the people that arrive hard are low. Many of them are low income without cars, at least 40%. 42% of them, according to the data. Um, so I, a lot of people are struggling with housing costs and um, high costs overall. And I want to um, make sure that I want to have free fares, especially for seniors and youth to start off with. But in the long-term vision, I want to see uh, free fares uh, permanently after we find the funding sources. Uh, and I've talked about some options which may be available either legislatively or on the ballot for those long-term options. Great. Thank you. And next we have Murphy. Okay, I, I think our overall fare structure is, is pretty good. Uh, we provide a number of discounts for various purposes. Uh, under the Measure BB, we've got the student uh, students ride from free up to K to 12, I guess. 
Um, and we've got a number of programs with our Easy Pass that offer reduced fares for uh, low income residents. Uh, and then there's always this, the senior uh, fares, which is uh, uh, discounted as well. Uh, I would be in favor of free fares for some period of time in particular. Uh, as we try to attract new riders back in. And in fact, uh, one of the things on our legislative agenda for our, the next coming uh, uh, year is that, that very idea. Uh, and we're proposing the legislature to come up with, a, with, the, with the funding uh, to provide for us to do some, some form of, uh, of free fares. Uh, so uh, I think that would be helpful, uh, again, certainly in the short term. Mm -hmm. Thank you, and now Sarah. Thanks. Um, many of our riders are, are rent burdened and affordability um, is a barrier, um, especially if you are transferring or you know, have to take multiple transit systems. So I do, um, I think we can see already that, uh, you know, with the Clipper Bay Pass pilot that that there is a, you know, a high labor demand. Apologies. Um, and, and, and I think we'll see that increase among employers and their commuters. And I think we really need to run the numbers, right? So how much uh, many more riders will come back if, if we do discount fares? Um, and you know, will we be able to run enough service to accommodate them all? Um, so I think, um, yeah, I'm, uh, you know, when we look at how much does it cost to collect fares, Right, you know, backdoor boarding, you know, opportunities to pay your fares, um, not just at the front of the bus, but you know, fare policy and um, integrating our transit fares um, is really important. Um, but mm -hmm. we need to be sure that um, we're financially whole and building coalitions to actually bring in the resources so we can okay, pay for thank it. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Sarah, and thanks to all of you. Um, so for the next question, we will be starting with Murphy. And the question is, do you believe AC Transit sufficiently listens to rider input in its decision making? And what systemic changes would you institute to improve this, if not? Um, I, I think it's a mixed bag, I, you know, to be honest with you. I think in some instances, uh, AC Transit does a very good job. Uh, again, I was just on the, the conference, a Zoom meeting with the uh, Accessibility Committee. And we've done, a, I think they do a great job in providing input to, to the AC Transit and AC Transit listens to them. Um, I, just, I just don't know if we do it across the board to, uh, in every instance. Uh, I know we, we try, but I just don't know if we accomplish that. One of the things that I'm really advocating and pushing for as we look to reimagine our transit network uh, post COVID is that we do extensive community outreach and make sure we get the input that we're gonna need to, to determine uh, where our network goes transit network goes. So uh, if, if we're not in the areas where we haven't done as well, I'm hoping and I'm going to be fighting for us to do better uh, to make sure we get community input. Okay, thank you. And um, but before we go to Sarah, I, I noticed that Barisha has dropped off. And I, I should mention that I saw a message earlier that he was having some tech issues, which led to the lateness originally. And so I assume it's more of that and it'll get figured out. Um, but we will monitor. And in the meantime, yeah, go ahead, uh, Sarah. So I don't know enough to uh, to say how good of a job AC Transit's currently doing uh, right now. Um, I do know um, that I I've had a lot of writers tell me that um, you know they've gone to board meetings. And, and, and especially on Zoom, right? There's, the, there's less of that feeling that um, they're really being heard um, and that, that they're getting responses, right? And same thing when it comes to, you know, complaining and reporting being passed up. I've heard, you know, that folks aren't getting responses and that they're getting information that doesn't help them get to where they need to know. Um, so I think that, you know, many of our riders, um, they don't have time to complain to us, right? We need to focus on the customer experience, right? Um, and really be proactive. Um, so we are, um, yeah, uh, not putting, being in that reactive space, right? Because so often, um, you know, I want to be sure I'm meeting the right needs of, of riders who are having problems that we're never going to hear about. So okay. I think we've got a good chance to do that when we're uh, reimagining our transit network okay. starting. Thank you. Um, Brisha, uh, welcome back. I see there was a tech issue. 
Um, would you like me to repeat the question? Y yes, please. Okay. Um, do you believe AC Transit sufficiently listens to rider input in its decision making? And what systemic changes would you institute to improve this? If not, go ahead. Um, I think um, it should be an easier way to um, report um, comments for changes, like immediately if a bus is late or if, you know, um, some, uh, something that uh, wants to be reported right away rather than waiting for a meeting, um, not, and not verbally over the phone, but um, either um, like a, through the app or something, a customer, like a customer service chat, um, email, something that's more direct. And I'd like to have more uh, community, um, community meetings, local community meetings to um, get input. Um, and so, yeah, I think those are some of the improvements that we can have. Great. Thank you. And uh, before the next question, just a reminder for our audience that um, we encourage you to submit questions for our candidates. Um, there's a little Q&A button at the bottom of the Zoom screen if you're using the uh, Zoom app. And you can, yeah, whatever has come up, uh, please feel free to ask. And OK, so uh, we're going to start with Sarah on this next one. Uh, AC Transit expects growing deficits in the future um, in the status quo, even with a return to ridership. How would you help bring AC Transit to long-term sustainability? Go ahead, Sarah. Thanks. Um, so as I mentioned, we need systemic and structural changes, um, but we can't uh, wait. We do need to uh, really uh, dive into what we're spending on money on now and uh, work with partners uh, to, to reduce that. So one example, uh, we currently spend about 5 million a year um, as the payer of last resort on the Transbay Transit Terminal. Are we getting our money's worth, right? When we're looking at how our Transbay service is performing, right? So we need to both be, you know, uh, working to get more uh, revenues into that transit terminal, other other folks um, uh, leasing and renting there, um, and also restructuring our transbase service to really focus on the most productive routes. Um, we we have an opportunity to uh, support a ballot measure, right? To focus on transit operations, I think that's a good idea. Uh, we need to invest in our bus riders who never left, not the shiny mega projects. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And so next we have Barisha. Um, I think I mentioned this before, but I, I might have it might have been a bit premature because but um, as I've been saying, um, we need to um, you put something for a long term for short term, we're going to use the federal money that's available. But for the for the long term, we need a long term solution. Uh, we need to get something on the ballot or legislative lead to bring in money. Um, I, it's my understanding that um, AC Transit only gets 8% of its revenue from the actual riders. So we should have already been looking at, to me, we should already be looking at the long-term solutions to get riders back on board um, because we don't get most of our revenue from the riders themselves. We get a lot of it from parcel tax and um, we get a lot of it from state and federal money. And so the, um, the ballot and the legislative remedy is really something that we need to get all of our goals, both um, customer service operations um, and all of the ideas that were mentioned that I mentioned before that I wanna do the projects. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, and last on this question, we have Murphy. Okay. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's a it's a two prong project uh, uh, process. Uh, on the one hand, we're going to have to whatever our revenue sources are, and uh, we have to live with whatever within whatever we have. So that's rule number one. So so we're going to have to 
you know, tighten our belt, look where, look under the 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 the, the, the sofa cushions and what have you to come up with as much revenues as we can that uh, under the current environment, and within that provide the services that that we can can afford to abide, provide with the, that funding source. Having said that, at the same time, we ought to be working to try to in, improve that funding source, either through some uh, local measure or at the state level. Uh, I don't think we can rely on the feds to provide operating funds. That's just, they've been out of the operating business for a long, long time, and I don't see them coming back into that business. Uh, so I just think we need to focus at the state level and at the, at the local and regional level for additional operating funds. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, and that is actually going to be our last of our um, of our I guess pre-selected questions, and we are going to shift to audience Q and A now. And so, let's see, it's six forty-six now. We're going to have to wrap right at six fifty-five to do your uh, sort of concluding statements. So what we'll try to get uh, two of these in. And so, um, first question is. Um, okay, we heard a lot about the 57 already. The 57 really needs lots of improvement. It's now uh, so much better. It, uh, it's now so much better since we don't have to ride in van holes. However, there is much room for improvement for both the 57 and Tempo. What are your plans to improve cleanliness of the 57 and the Tempo? And sorry, let's start with Barisha. The cleanliness, um, I want to have, well, then I would focus on um, getting us to focus on having someone clean that on a daily basis, whatever those cleanliness issues are, um, focus on that. Um, so the cleaning staff would really, you know, um, and then what was the question about tempo again? Um, you know, we can we can stick with the 57, the cleanliness question for now. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah, so we wanna we wanna, you know, enforce the rules, uh, you know, and then we wanna have ex extra um, staff to clean it and to make sure that it's up to standard because we have to value all of our customers all the time. They mm -hmm. should be a top priority. Riders are a top priority, and I would make that uh, one of my one of my um, goals is to 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 make sure that issue is resolved. Okay, great. And next, how about Sarah? Thanks. So, when it comes to cleanliness. We need to, um, you know, it's similar to our operator crisis, right? This is a staffing shortage issue. So we need to be able to address um, those fundamental issues uh, so we can hire more staff. We also need to um, be really transparent, right? With our customer satisfaction um, data and, what, and also uh, use that data um, and our reports from our operators to really understand where the hotspots are and deploy resources to address those, right? Is it a particular segment, right? Is it a particular time of day? Um, and those are, th that's really critical because, um, you know, the, I don't I'm, think the problems are occurring over the whole routes um, mm -hmm. necessarily, but um, it can really affect your experience. So I think having, um, you know, restructuring staff to have a, a real customer experience uh, director, right, existing staff, um, to ensure that all of our departments are working together with leadership uh, to address issues like cleanliness. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. And uh, we'll go to Murphy. Uh, well, yes. Uh, one, well, one of the things that AC Transit, one of the key performance indicators that, uh, that we keep, try to keep track of is, in fact, the bus cleanliness. And so before each bus goes out, uh, there's a level of, uh, of uh, cleanliness that needs to be attained before it can, it, 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 it's allowed to pull out. Uh, but that, so that's fine. So we can do it at the beginning. Uh, but then what happens as the bus operates during the course of the day? And one of the suggestions I have, and I've talked to staff about this, is to build in enough time in the schedule 
to allow the bus operator at the end of their runs to at least inspect the bus inside to see if this is some additional trash or if people have left anything on those particular buses uh, and build that into the schedule so that there's uh, so that they can similar to what you see with Southwest Airlines and what the mm -hmm. what the flight attendants do when they when they bring a plane in. Uh, and I'd like us to to to, to maybe in, in, you know try to improve the cleanliness uh, as as the day goes on. Mm -hmm. And I'm not asking the drivers to clean. I'm just saying do some inspection uh, on that bus. Okay, thank you. And we have time for just one more audience question. Let's just hold it to forty seconds for these responses because I, I don't want to have us go over. And so um, we will be uh, starting with Barisha on this one. And the question is, uh, the entire AC Transit bus network is getting slower year after year. What would you do to reduce travel times for riders in 40 seconds? Thank you. And Barisha. I kind of want clarification on the question. Is it yeah. getting slower? How so? Is it getting slower because there's the bus route is late? I mean, it's, it's very big. I feel like I don't understand. Dan, the question? Like, I, I, yeah, I, I, I'm reading the question is that it, it's taking longer to get um, from the scheduled time to the oh, arrival. Well, um, I, as I said, I'm the main one who wants to do bus rapid transit. I want to extend yeah. bus rapid transit similar to the tempo. I want to make it go, you know, all the way south down the corridor and all the way going north down the corridor. I want to have more BRT. That's going to speed it up. It's going to make it more efficient. It's going to track riders. Also want to get rid of the, um, make the routes longer and not cut them up so much. For example, um, on East 14th, it used to be a bus um, that goes like all the way from Hayward all the way down to like Oakland. They cut it up into like several different. So I want to cut out like all of the, the transfers because the bus mm -hmm. line cut up so much. I want to cut okay, out the thank you. get the BRT. Thank you. Um, okay, next we have Murphy. Uh, well, the slower, but I mean, well, that's just a function, I think, of, of, uh, of the traffic that exists on the, on the existing routes. Uh, and, and so, you know, we don't control the streets uh, of, the, of the cities and, 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 and jurisdictions that we serve. So part of the problem is we've got to work more closely with the cities uh, to, to better coordinate uh, you know the the light, the lights, the the traffic light situation, as well as to tr do the, the types of things that help to moderate the traffic, so that uh, our buses can flow a little bit better. So that would be that would be one of my sort of sixty minute idea about uh, how to try to improve the the, the, uh, the the travel speeds. Okay. Thank you, and and Sarah. Thanks. I think we need to uh, do hundreds and thousands of really small projects. They may seem mundane, but things like bus bulbs, things like short queue jump lanes, right? Um, using the data that we have from onboard our buses to really hone in on where are the bottlenecks um, that are generating the majority of the de delay. Also things like, um, you know, rear door boarding um, as well, um, you know, ensuring our um, our vehicles are um, you know really equipped to you know bring on board people as as quickly as possible. So you know maybe it's more more routes like the tempo, right? Um, more doors on buses. But you know what we've seen is we also need to build a political will, right? And um, okay, Th thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Uh, um, um, I always feel bad to cut somebody off, but thank you. So, okay, well, that is the last of our Q&A. And uh, thank you for everyone who submitted the questions. Sorry, we didn't reach every question. So, and just thanks to, for everyone who joined us tonight. This was a great conversation. I learned a lot. I hope you all did too. Um, I hope you're feeling better informed about these issues at stake in these two different races. And so to wrap up, we're gonna have each candidate give a short one minute concluding statement. And we will begin with AC Transit Ward 3 with Sarah Sayed. Thanks. Today in the Bay Area, the average resident can reach nine times as many jobs in 45 minutes by car than on transit. Um, it gets even worse um, if you are um, if you live in a community of color 
or if you are living with low incomes. Transit is even more scarce. I envision a future where access gaps are closed and where people who ride the bus are able to access jobs, schools, and all of life's necessities. Um, I envision that AC Transit and our local communities and the region will address these disparities together through more equitable transit, land use, and planning. Um, I'm, I'm honored to, um, <laughs> to be running for the AC Transit Board to bring what I've learned from working inside of government for over 15 years to advance equitable solutions. I know the problems and I know the difference that um, you know, our elected officials can make um, when they are willing to, um, to, you know, to not engage in strategic misrepresentation, to be really clear mm -hmm. and to make tough decisions. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Sarah. And I would now like to invite the Ward 4 candidates to give a one minute concluding statement. We will start with Murphy McCauley. Okay, well, thank you again for having this, uh, this event. Um, uh, as I mentioned, AC Transit is at a real crossroads. Uh, these next few years will determine, I think, where this agency goes from, uh, from here on out. Uh, I've got the experience, as I've mentioned before, both at the federal, state, and local level, uh, and a proven track record of, uh, of advocating on behalf of transit with respect to funding as well as for operations. Um, I served on the Alameda County Transportation Commission for seven years uh, with overseeing their uh, citizen watchdog committee. Uh, so that's the kind of experience I have. Uh, working with transit throughout my 40 years. But I just want to close with a quote from uh, uh, Assemblyman Bill, Bill Quirk, who supports my campaign. He, he mentioned, he said, in his 50 years in politics, he's never met anyone more qualified for a position than Murphy McCall. So I will close with that. Okay, thank you. And next we have Risha Spriggs. Go ahead. Brisha, you're on mute, sorry. But we can restart the clock. Yes, um, I know all the stakeholders um, in the process and also being a bus rider, I am a proven leader in Ward 4 and all of my experience, my tenacity, and I have the vision to make AC Transit, to move AC Transit forward for the people, to make it more equitable, more accessible, um and uh reliable and um i uh, i have the uh the the uh endorsements of alameda labor council um director Jovaka uh, beckles liz ortega of the labor council kim martinez of ask me um as i said i was an organizer for transform before um, and a lot of, of, of backers who know that I've been out in the community um, working and creating a better environment already in Ward 4, as I said at my corridor improvement project. And I'm just, I'm, I'm the best person to um, move forward and um, create a, a dialogue and a better process for us all. And uh, so I would like to have your endorsement for Ward 4. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, all three of you, for making the time to join us. And um, once again, I'd like to thank our co-hosts. And finally, uh, before we wrap for the night, just want to remind everyone again to join us this Thursday at 6 for the BART District 6 Candidate Forum. Uh, we hope you'll join us, and we've dropped the RSVP link for the forum into the chat. All right, thank you all, and have a great night. Great, thank you. Thank you so much. Take care.